Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube video channel. Just want to show you an orthodontist case that I've done a couple of years ago. I haven't had a chance to present to uh, some of you guys that follow me on uh, YouTube. I uh, want to share the uh, big screen right now so we can get started with this presentation. And here we go. This patient came to my office with a smile, with a very up, thin upper lip and um, very, <clears throat> and very natu natural lower lip. But when he put it in the lip relaxed, as you can see, there is a tendency that he had to try to forcefully close his lip in order to close all the teeth. So there is some kind of uh, consciousness about how his teeth look. And uh, you can see that his facial profile overall look pretty good. I have a couple other photo, but I haven't had a chance to uh, upload for this presentation for the side view. Let me go ahead and show you uh, the zoom in smile. When he smile, you can see that the uh, number 11 tend to be higher than the occlusion of the right side. On the right side, seem to be very nice occlusion. Uh, number 10 seem to be lingually inclined and number 11 is facially protruded. That's the same thing you see on the, the right side view. Number 11 is really sticking out. Number 11 really sticking out and number 10 is really sticking out. Uh, the sticking, uh, I mean, lingually inclined, all right? The next one is the intraoral photo. As you can see that this is the picture, the intraoral picture that we actually finished his deep cleaning after a month uh, and waiting for the gum to heal. Uh, after that, the gum have receded um, maybe two or three millimeter. So number uh, 11 uh, to begin with is actually longer than number six. Right up the back, there's a couple of options we can do is initially, I recommend him to have a gum graft before we even start orthodontist. That is one option. He didn't want to do with that. And so uh, whatever the length of the canine here, we cannot improve it unless you intrude it first and then you extrude it out. But I didn't do that. I start basically trying to um, give him a couple options. First of all, you can see on the left side here that the um, uh, there's a, a posterior cross spine from number 15, 14, 13, and 12, all cross spine on this side. Upper anterior, little cross spine, I mean, low, I mean anterior uh, cross spine uh, on the left as well. On the right side, on the other hand, um, minor from edge to edge on the posterior T, and uh, pretty, pretty nice alignment but certainly we can improve it. Uh, if we uh, go ahead and try to accomplish in the uh, ideal scenario, because the way it look like right now is, uh, look like the um, number two and three doesn't have like the uh, functional cusp, which is the lingual cusp, doesn't really buy on the back teeth. And that's what the goal is to recreate the original ideal smile. And so this is how he, when he opened his mouth, you can see crowded teeth. Here's another picture. Um, before the deep cleaning, this is how his gum look. When he first came, really read this uh, gum at the area of number 10 and 11, because it's very difficult for him to maintain the hygiene there. So if, if any fluids that capture in here will cause chronic inflammation. Same thing on the lower arch here. A lot of calculus uh, presented when he first came to our office, a lot of heavy tartar. And the only way to improve it is get a deep cleaning and then set it out with the deep with the orthodontist treatment. So yeah, you can see right there. Um, so this little blood here, I numb him before I took picture. There is a heavy calculus at the canine as well. He didn't want to even want to touch his teeth when he when he do hygiene when he begin with his mouth because he thought everything is really not very good uh, scenario. So. Uh, that's what you see after deep cleaning. You can see the gum look a lot more improved. Uh, and with, uh, of course, consciousness of uh, hygiene instruction that we gave him, allow him to have a really um, presentable 
mile before braces. So when we're looking at this situation like this, you can see that the, the narrow arc on the upper and uh, sort of like a triangle uh, uh, shape of uh, uh, top and bottom. This, this is the reason why you have the uh, arc discrepancy of the uh, um, both side, mostly on the left side that not allow the original um, class one uh, functional uh, or it, what we call it um, ideal over by over jet doesn't happen right there. So the goal is to expand this art out a couple millimeter and uh, put the, these occlusion on a posterior occlusion correct position. When we when we expand like that, what it happened is allowed the room for the lateral incisor going in and the canine going in. Uh, the other option I present to him would be um, let me go back one step here. Uh, the other uh, option I talked to him, which is much faster, would be just simply just remove tube number um, 12 and and create enough room for removing number 11 in and absolutely in, having enough room to put number 10 in. That will be very easy for me to do. But I told him and if I do that, I won't be able to fix his cross by here on both sides and also if I do that I might have a hard time to curve I might have to remove one tube on the bottom tube uh, anterior in order to fix the, the crowded situation so we end up we end up started the cave without um, with the intention that we're not going to take any tube out but we are going to expand upper and lower art as much as possible to put the, uh, the uh, art together so let me show you the progress that we did we start right here, there is, um, we start with the unraveling the upper art and lower art with night tie wire. And then of course we have to use a lot of open coil to expand the, um, the spade and the bottom tube to move those um, crowded bottom anterior teeth straight. And it took a lot of effort to align top and bottom together. As you see that when they come to the end, the, we got a nice, um, nice alignment of the number 11 uh, into occlusion, number 10 into occlusion, and we were able to correct the, the uh, posterior one by right here on the right side and the left side. And uh, we did use the expander on the upper, it's the uh, rapid palatal expander, even though the patient started at the A at uh, early 20, uh, we uh, gave it a try and it seemed to work well. Uh, it took a, a while to settle down. We didn't want to, after we expand, we, we wait a little while before we remove the uh, expander. And so here's the progress um, of the case. Uh, a lot of night tie wire, a lot of bending uh, in the movement. And um, once we accomplish the uh, alignment of the top and bottom, we did have to use the maximum uh, uh, maximum torch to uproot the, the all the root that is wasn't it straight in order to create the stability, long-term stability of the teeth. And uh, these are picture that we took along the uh, case. And uh, as you can see, there's a couple of tricks I wanna show you, those who do an orthodontist. Is, um, in order for you to move uh, these uh, and upper teeth backward, you are using a super power, uh, uh, power chain and going to the lower part of the incisor and uh, and leave it like that. And what it does is it of course is squeezing and it's push the teeth backward, create more uh, torch for the uh, root to be straighter. And uh, here's another trick uh, to correct the midline of the lower arc. You can see I put the uh, cross cross art elastic to move the jaw the teeth to the right side and I just took some photos just to show people and here is uh, another trick in order for you to put the uh, create an occlusion into uh, maximum into occlusion space or expanding the lower art I put lingo click on the premolar and have the patient where cross uh, arc from buckle number 
2013 and do the lingo of number 2021 and that's how you expand the lower art and you narrow and you and you use narrow down the upper art to put the occlusion the, together it took a lot of effort as you can see there is little trick here and there but now you can see the k come along a corner from where you begin with to the end right now uh, using the elastic is very important with the uh, the uh, compliant that patient doing their job at home. Uh, so you can see that there is a facial change from uh, when he first came, his uh, his profile looked a lot more narrow. After we expand, you can see that his face looked a lot more full and all the teeth come into uh, the space where there is no more uh, space between the corner of the, the lip which is uh, important. And here is the another uh, series of photos show you from beginning to the midway and to the end. And so this is the end, this is the beginning. And you can see when we take the size picture, the canine is coming in. Canine here is way out here, canine here is down. Same thing on this side, the canine, now canine comes into occlusion. Uh, Lateral incisor were lingually inclined, now lateral incisor there. And then that little space there, triangle space, will be filled up at the patient floss and maintain his hygiene daily. Here we go. This is another uh, facial aspect that we want to review from beginning, narrow uh, face. But when you get to the end, his face a lot more broader. and. Uh, Here's another detail that I just want to show. Um, this is the upper art seem to be straight. And you can see this is the evidence that we use the rapid palatal expander and we cut it and we, we uh, almost finished the case. Um, a lot of detail. Here's the side veil that we showed you before, but you can see that posterior cross by being fixed on the right side, posterior cross by on the left side being fixed on the left side. Canine and lateral were disorderly uh, located. Now it's located correctly. Those little spades right here is caused because once we straight your the teeth out, you create black triangle. I could have done this, do um, uh, interproximal reduction with enamel uh, uh, strip, but I didn't want to create any kind of long-term damage. So I did not do any interproximal stripping that most people do with Invisalign. Here's another case. Here's another picture of the smile starting with uh, very um, uh, <clears throat> forcefully smile he, because he doesn't smile much. But now you can see the smile more relaxed with a more fully uh, 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 smiling with the lip. Here we go. This is the final photo. You can see that uh, upper art routed and lower art routed. Nice smile outcome. This black triangle will be filled at the, the patient floss and maintain the tip well, his tip well. Here's the before open by which you just want to show that you how crowded it looks on the lower tip so you have an appreciation of what we accomplished. Same thing on the upper. Um, crowded, really crowded and narrow on the upper. And here the upper, you see the before and this is the after, very nice curly. We could have improved this part right here, but he did not wear elastic properly. So there is a little discrepancy right there. Same thing on the bottom too, but you can see it's very crowded. Now it's up lower our straight. Although we're trying to really want to get all the teeth straight, but there was time that uh, he missed several appointments. And here is just a quick uh, uh, the end here. You can look at the, how it looked right here and how he smiled right here. He did give a very nice testimonial. I didn't want to put on this video. I give this slide at this final slide. And I just want to say thank you for uh, listening. And I hope to see you guys see you again next time. If you guys have any comment and question, feel free to ask me. If you are a patient, feel free to ask me. If you're a dentist and want to learn about orthodontists, you feel free to ask me. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye.